Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Coming to you from COG Studios on Thursday, November 14th in a busy off-season week for the LA Galaxy. Big news, not surprising anybody, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is not returning for the 2020 season. Doesn't surprise anybody, I don't think. At least not if you've been listening to our show for quite a while. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about his impact on the team. We're going to talk about maybe why he left, a whole bunch of things like that. Uh, obviously, that always turns the discussion to who's going to be replacing Zlatan Ibrahimovic. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, Dave Romney departs as well. So lots of things happening and leaving and nothing so much coming. Although there is a pretty juicy rumor that has uh, has a little Uruguayan possibly coming uh, to the LA Galaxy. Uh, we'll talk about that and, and sort of get you all set and ready to go. So, uh, in order to help me out tonight, we've enlisted the help of uh, one of our one of our smartest uh, people ever on this podcast. Uh, he's he, 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 I was going to say the, the handsomest, the handsomest maybe, um, but but definitely the oldest. So so you got that going for you. Please welcome back to the show, Larry Morgan, Don on Twitter. Larry, how's it going, buddy? Good, Josh. Thank you very much for having me on. Just two things. One, just want to make sure the season is over, right? Yes, it's it over. is over. Yes. And two, I think you ought to provide us an update on the countdown to the impending arrival of the future podcast. The future. How, are th- how are things going on that front? Every Everybody is uh, is technically on time. Um, everything looks like it is still de- December 19th, the middle of December. Uh, my wife is uh, currently thinking that uh, maybe being pregnant wasn't a great idea. Um, but having said all that, uh, she's still fairly but comfortable. But getting her pregnant was a great idea. It, it probably was. Okay. It, it wasn't one of the worst sure, sure, ideas sure, she ever had, sure. Larry. That's for sure. Um, so anyway, so everything seems to be going good. So, um, you know, like I said, if I suddenly disappear from here, it's probably because because uh, Junior's coming. I, I'm sorry. I should use his full name. Zlatan David Landon Guessman. You know, that's I'm sure that's what it's going to be. Juan Pablo. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Juan Pablo. John John Guzman, right? As Bruce Arena would call me. Um, so all those things. So everything's going good. So we're we're hanging in there. Fingers and I think Bruce was serious when he called you John Guzman oh, he, too. Well, he was also, I think, um, slightly inebriated. So that helped a little bit. It was the wine. The wine always got Bruce. It was it was at a it was at an event where he was allowed to be. By the way, I just want to want to state that. Uh, I think I was a little. Uh, I think I had a couple beers too. So uh, not a problem. All right, just a couple. That's good. Yeah. Uh, what you know? I, it was young. Um, somebody somebody in the chat room says, "Hey, you got, got to get that tax deduction for 2019." That's right. You have a kid in 2019. All the way up until you know the thirty first of December. We must have an attorney listening. Tax in. deduction for the kid, no matter what. I think he'll fit in. Uh, or an accountant. That. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think we're going to squeeze that one in just barely. Uh, looking forward to that. I think two thousand dollar child credit. Woohoo! Yeah. There's there's a reason to have kids. You know, spend a million dollars to, to save two thousand dollars. <laughs> <sighs> all right. Anyway, away from uh, from child fun stuff that I get to deal with all the time. Let's talk about more. Uh, I guess child stuff. Maybe more fun stuff. Uh, maybe not so fun stuff. I, I don't think it was. Well, let's start here first. The one bit of news that we can sort of tell you about 2020 is that we know that the LA Galaxy on March 14th will play the first home game for Miami in Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale. I was going to say thank you, thank you. That was good. Because those Miami commissioners continue to put up roadblocks as far as the Beckham and his partner is uh, trying to choose a site to build a new stadium, and the commissioners are saying, "Not here, not here." It sounds like Robert Moses back in the days when the when the Dodgers moved out west. Uh, it's not going well at all. Yeah, I was going to say it was all the all the rage on uh, on Twitter here. Whenever this came out on uh, on the thirteenth, was that just yesterday? Did yesterday, yes. And yes. then it just got buried by the news that Zlatan was leaving. So yes. that's always fun. I, it seemed <laughs> like it was four days ago. Uh, the LA Galaxy, uh, the press release says, will travel to South Florida to face Inter Miami on Saturday, March fourteenth, and what will mark the expansion club's first regular season home game in their inaugural season. Home game in season. quotes. Home game in quotes. It's, well, it was like it's like uh, even Chicago was in quotes, right? You know. True. That's how it goes. And what their stadium was? What forty five minutes outside the city? Uh, it was, it, that's Dallas. Dallas. Is, Dallas. Is, yeah, that's Chicago's right, that's not right. that far. Uh, the game is set to kick off at two thirty p.m. Eastern time or eleven thirty a.m. Pacific time at Fort Lauderdale Stadium. Um, it, just a quick heads up, uh, and I know my good buddy uh, Mike Gray uh, over at LA Galaxy Confidential. I know he knows this. I think uh, Kevin Baxter also put it out as well. Is if you want to book your hotels, you might want to do it now because it's spring break in Florida. 
uh, at that time. So yeah, it's it's going to be a good time. So March 14th, mark calendars on 2020, LA Galaxy versus Inter Miami. So uh, David Beckham's new club playing against David Beckham's uh, former club. So that's always... Uh, that should be very interesting. It's a fun one. Yeah. It's a fun one. I don't know what that team looks like yet. Obviously, they don't have a p- ton of pieces yet. I think they've signed maybe, what, like three guys, something like that? Yeah, it I could. Mean, yeah, it, not very many at all. It could. Um, so we'll see how, uh, how that goes. Uh, but now we have to, and I think this will consume a large portion of our time, Larry, maybe... I, I, Quite honestly, as it should. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic departs the LA Galaxy. In it won't be back for the 2020 season. His contract uh, technically ran all the way through this year, but the LA Galaxy and Zlatan have agreed to mutually terminate that contract in part ways. Um, so I believe right, right now, right. and the Zlatan has told us his contract ran until December 31st. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And I believe if that's the case, and everybody's happy, and they're just going to let him go, is that if he if they have terminated that contract. Uh, that may mean that Zlatan can go sign for any other team right now because it doesn't have to be inside of a transfer window if he's a free agent, technically. And if rumors are true, he probably has about, oh, 15 or 20 teams pursuing him. <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, it's th- incredible just the rumored interest in this guy. Granted, he did have two fantastic seasons in Los Angeles, but still, I mean, they they are just hot to trot after this guy. And yeah, I, I mean, that's what that's what the, the stats and what he was able to do, um, you know, in the sh- his short amount of time with the LA Galaxy. I mean, you can look at it. 52 goals, 17 assists, and 53 starts for the LA Galaxy. Amazing. That's a, that's a ridiculous number. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start from this. Uh, we're not surprised that Zlatan left, and I think if you've been uh, watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, you knew that that was probably going to happen. We had been telling you that was probably going to happen. And so... Um, this sort of just follows along with that. Uh, the the big deal here, obviously, is that the LA Galaxy have to now try to replace an irreplaceable person. And and I say that not in terms of even scoring. Yeah, you could find somebody who could score 30 goals for you in, in the season. But one thing I think they will not do is they won't try to replace a personality like Zlatan with another personality. Well, I don't think you can. Who can? I was going to say, name me somebody yeah. who has a personality. That, I mean, listen, you couldn't replace... This is, this is my, my thing, and I think this puts it um, somewhat in perspective. Perspective. And having been here for a while now and seen the big European names that have come and gone, and Larry, we've both seen them. David Beckham came. You can't replace David Beckham whenever no. he leaves. You know that. Uh, even if you got Zlatan Ibrahimovic immediately after David Beckham, which would have been a good deal because Zlatan would have been a, got a lot younger. And he, he, and he wanted to, right, right. but it just didn't work out. Even if you ha- if that happens, though, you're still not replacing David Beckham. There's still a slide from David Beckham to Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And, no question. you know, that's one of those things. Um... And so, yeah, okay, so that's that's something. So you can't replace that. You can't replace the personality. You may be able to replace some of the offense. I don't think you need to replace all the offense. You know, with 30 goals, people say, oh, now you need to find 30 goals. Yeah, you need to find 30 goals, but 30 goals can be mean that you have a guy who scores 20 goals, and then you decide not to give up 20 other goals. Um, that would probably be more beneficial as well. Um, so... Is he irre- is he irreplaceable? Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah, and, and I agree. I don't listen. I, I know this has given all the Zlatan haters, and and I think you and I are in a They're position coming out of the woodworks. Well, and that happens anytime. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, AJ De La Garza got traded, and there were some people who were like, "Glad he's gone." Still one of the worst trades it's, yeah, that this team has made, in my humble opinion. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's it 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 means really um, in in this way that that for me, Zlatan was a personality. Um, and he's he's got two sides of a coin. I mean, there's two sides. Of Zlatan did unbelievable things, Larry. Uh, scoring goals. Um, you know, the attention that he brought to individual games. I mean, look at the El Traficos and, and playing against LAFC and tell me that those games aren't as big as they already are right now because of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Well, all, all you need to know about his impact was think of the television ratings at the last El Trafico in that playoff setting. At Bank of California Stadium, I mean, these these are numbers that this league has not seen before, and it was, I'm, you know, you, I, I remember sitting next to you in the press box, and you're getting tweets from people all over the world. Yes, who were watching the game. Yes, that tells you the impact this guy had. Yeah, not only on the galaxy, but on on the on the league in general. I, I think I, you know, I wrote it in my article trying to sum it up, and and I think I have a good perspective on it. And clearly, I think I think most LA Galaxy fans probably have a good perspective on it. Is that what he was able to do and how he was able to entertain us over the last two years is something that you probably can't replace, um, and that's just that simple. Um, that's and that's fine. But there's other sides of that as well. Obviously, the antics, the 
the gesticulations, the yelling, the screaming, the every chance he got putting the league down. Um, all of those things add up to still a complete person. He's still a complete player there. He was one of the very few players in this league I've seen who could not only talk the talk, but he walked the walk. And he backed up everything he said. Every outlandish statement he would make, he backed it up. Yes. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, you, you look at him and what he was able to do. I mean, he dragged the LA Galaxy the last two years, you know, into a position where they are better now. Um, and I, I think that's an important thing to say. We talk about just his attitude on the field and off the field. Um, certainly, I got into it enough on Twitter today that, you know, it, it doesn't surprise anybody, I don't think. Um, that I, I, Zlatan was a bully. And I'll, I'll say that, and I he don't was. have I don't have a problem with saying it. I mean, we we had we had watched him for the last what one and three quarter seasons he was here, and we saw the body language, we saw his gestures toward his teammates when I getting the ball in positions he he wanted you know to get the ball. We saw him how tough he could be on those guys, and and it's just like like you said, he was a bully. Yeah. And, and, and he was, and, and not just because he's six five, two hundred and thirty pounds. No, no, he he's a bully. He was a bully. He was a he was he's but a, a, but a very talented bully. <laughs> he's a perfectionist. Yes, he was. And he demands that perfection from everybody else. Now, I'll tell you who else was a perfectionist. Robbie Keane was a perfectionist. Yes, he was. Landon Donovan was a perfectionist as well. Um, Robbie Keane more so. If you want to compare people, let's compare Robbie Keane to Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And the thing you get with Robbie Keane is that, yes, he was hard on his teammates. And Not so much during games, but in training. Yes. If and you were around training like I was, like we were, he was tough on his teammates. That's one of the big differences between him and Zlatan. Zlatan let his feelings be known on the field during matches. Keane wasn't like that. But if you... Keane would still stare you down. Yes. Give you, but it wasn't the same level. But if you messed up in training, oh, would he let you know. But Keane was also a motivator. I mean, he would do those things. He would get on, but he was motivating. It's why, you know, uh, Mike McGee tweeted out, hey, if you want to, I'll tell you how to win an MLS Cup. Listen closely. Hire Robbie Keane as your manager. I get that. That makes sense to me. Robbie Keane's going to be a coach. Zlatan's never going to be a coach, in my opinion. That's never going to happen. He doesn't have the temperament for it. No. He doesn't have the want to see everybody else around him improve either. And again, this is not knocking Zlatan. This is just who he is. The only way he would coach somebody if he, if he would be able to coach 11 Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, and you saw that. You know, it's like, oh, Zlatan, they did the best 11 with Zlatan picked the best 11. Who would it be? And it's like Zlatan, Zlatan, Zlatan. It's 11 Zlatans. Um, you look at it. Now, having said all of that, um, and we'll get to the locker room and whether or not I think that was, you know, was injured. Yes, it was injured by Zlatan Ibrahimovic being there. Um, this guy never turned down autograph requests, never turned down picture requests. Uh, whenever he was talking to the media, Larry, very rarely did he not want to speak. Uh, and he did a ton of media. Uh, he was always kind and courteous and professional to us, or at least professional. And I don't want to be like, he wasn't sitting there smiling all the time, but he gave us good answers to good questions. I don't know what more you could ask for as a fan in terms of a guy that you want to support and cheer and be behind and a guy who would stop and sign autographs. His off the field was way nicer than he ever was on the field, and I've heard players tell me that as well. Well, one thing to know about Zlatan, too, is when we would go into the post-game locker room, head to the locker room, we would pass by the Champions Lounge, walk down a long hallway, make a left turn, and there's the locker room. Now, after games, win or lose, there were a number of Galaxy players who will be who will be nameless, who avoid Giovanni Del Santos. Okay, <laughs> yes, that's one. We've we've said it before. Who, Nobody's surprised. Who would avoid passing that Champions Lounge on the way out after a game? Zlatan always walked past that Champions Lounge. Very rare. I I can maybe once or twice do I know that he slipped out the back, and he, it was probably because he had something to do. Um, you know, I mean, that's the guy he was. I, I don't. You know, he, the and, writing and seeing the guy that he was with the fans compared to the guy he was on the pitch is just wow. It's just night and day. It's just I don't. I wouldn't say polar opposites, but there's such a drastic difference. There's a drastic difference, um, and that hurt the locker room. Um, and it wasn't. You know, everybody thinks of bullying as in, well, he yelled at everybody on the team. I'll tell you from just discussions I've had, it's not that he was yelled at everybody on the team. Yeah, he would get everybody. Um, you know, he would find everybody on the field to sort of yell at. But there were guys he picked on, and there were guys he targeted. And you can't have... I said it last time, I think it was the last one maybe with Kevin, or whenever Kevin was in studio last Thursday, but it's about building a team, and if you talk to Mike McGee and you talk to Todd Donovan, they're very clear on why they were successful in 20... starting in 2009, really, right? 2009 all the way through 2012, 2014. Why they were successful. And Mike said it, and Todd said it, because we played for each other. Right. 
I don't know that anybody on that team was playing on, on this team in 2019 was playing for each other. I know Zlatan wasn't playing for other, and I know there are other people on that team who were not playing for each other. Well, I, th I think part of the problem was Zlatan too. I mean, you know, it's it's amazing we're bringing up all these so-called problems, and he had two fantastic seasons. Yeah, I mean, in Los th we can get back to all the yeah. all the accolades, but, but yes. the thing with Zlatan is is he expected so much because he was used to getting so much, and when he wouldn't get that, he was getting frustrated, and it really. Yes and no. Can, it, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say yes and no, and I'll interrupt you only because okay, of this. Sure, sure. Um, is that he has this problem everywhere he goes. Yes. So I, w I was just going to say that. Yes, I, I agree. Mean, with I mean, you. we. This was. This is Zlatan. This is who he is. Right. And that's fine. And this is something that the galaxy wasn't used to, had never seen before. Yeah, I, I think so. Or and and be, to be honest with you, I don't know the professional players take kindly to the repeated abuse. You know, the constant. It's like you know, I was talking to somebody on Twitter, and I'm sitting there going, "Listen, if you showed up to your job every single day and somebody was yelling and screaming at you and picking on you, would you want to go to work? Go to work? You wouldn't want to go to work. If I was paid enough, yes. <laughs> no. No, you no, would collect your I, paycheck. I do agree with you. I would not want to work with that person. Yes, I, I would collect that paycheck, but you don't want to work with that person. Um, you know, somebody said, hey, um, have you noticed that there were no social media posts saying, oh, thanks, Lawton, it was great playing with you. And there was one. There was one that I, the only one that I've seen, there may be others, and maybe this is totally, you know, coincidental. Maybe it's everybody's off, and that's why. But or maybe it, the rest of the team is not on Twitter like me. <laughs> You're not on Twitter either. Uh, Efrain <laughs> Alvarez was the only one who said it. Right. Um, and he and Zlatan got to be fairly close. Fairly close. And, you know, hey, that's again, it's not that Zlatan picked favorites. It's just that he was different with different people. And I think if he thought you didn't have it, then he wasn't going to he wasn't going to spend time being nice to you. Uh, it wasn't like he only picked on people because he cared. He picked on people because that's what that's sort of his mentality. Again, it was a bully mentality. And he saw early on speaking about Efrain, and he saw early on this kid was special and he was and or, uh, he is and he will be special. Yeah. I mean, he saw early on the talent that by, this kid had. By the way, Efrain Alvarez uh, in the U17 World Cup semifinal game tonight had a free kick goal that tied the game against the Netherlands. Uh, that I think that was just before the 80th minute, so 78th, 79th minute, somewhere in there. Uh, it was one nothing Netherlands at the time. Efrain tied that. The uh, Mexico went into that uh, that game in the U17 semifinals and ended up winning nice. over Netherlands 4-3. to three. So Mexico, the U17s, will be in the wow. final, and I believe they play Brazil now that game was wow. still being played as I was doing what notes. a match that will be uh, but France and Brazil were playing and France was winning two nothing and Brazil came back I think and won that game three two um, that's what I saw it could be wrong just double check that just you know one of those things but regardless Mexico and Efrain Alvarez something that Dennis Tocloso talked about getting him time with the internationals getting him time with the U17s making sure that he would go for the World Cup and playing he's playing he's featuring he's scoring and now he's in a U17 World Cup final my prediction is he'll be in Europe before too long. Yeah. He has that much talent. Remember what Dennis said, though, and then we'll get back to Zlatan, but remember what Dennis said, which was, I think you have to be featuring for a team before you're able to go. No doubt. And so he needs to now step up and play for the LA Galaxy. At least maybe a couple more years here in LA. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's still, still a possibility. But anyway, so that's good. So, but I mean, so Zlatan, why, why do you think he left? And, and there's rumors, by the way, that the Galaxy were willing to offer him two years and $15 million. I have not been able to verify those, and that seems a little steep to me, but that's basically extending his contract at the existing rate, basically. Well, I think, first of all, if you go by his track record, he doesn't stay in places very long. I mean, I don't think he unpacks his suitcase or wherever he winds up going. Uh, and two, I think he wasn't a fan of Major League Soccer uh -huh. uh, with all the disparaging remarks he made about the league. The referees. And it's referees yep. throughout the season. Um, I remember after the last game, the El Trafico playoff game against LAFC, he, he said, if I leave, nobody will remember what MLS is. I don't think it's going to go quite to that extreme. Um, I just, I think when he first came to the league, it was something new. He was enjoying himself. He was having a real demonstrative impact. But the more he saw of this league, he didn't like it. And I just think... I just think finally said, hey, that's enough of this. I'm going to go back to Europe on a farewell tour, maybe Malmo or Man United or one of, like I said, 20 other teams that supposedly are pursuing him. I just think he got he got tired of Major League Soccer. Yeah. 
Um, and by the way, it's still his mo. Stay for a short time, move yeah. on. I mean, that's he has, he has not unpacked his suitcase <laughs> yeah. to this point. Um, I, I honestly, I think he ends up back in Italy. That's what I've I've said, and I think some of the smart Swedish reporters have also said that that you know he Inter really Milan, probably yeah. or, or AC Milan. AC I think Milan. is, is okay. the one that or Napoli was also Bologna, suggested. Yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, any of those. Um, in in his departure, we talk about. I said that Zlatan always knows. I told Eric this in a text message after he found out Zlatan was leaving. And we were going through all this stuff. I was busy writing my article on every text, and he goes, he goes, did you hear what? Did you see what he wrote in his in his social media post? And I said, yeah, and I'll read it just in case people didn't see. He uh, Zlatan said in his social media post whenever he le- left. By the way, we had to ask the LA Galaxy confirmation to see if he was actually leaving because this was ambiguous enough to think that he might actually be coming back. So and what did the Galaxy say? They said they uh, we have no comment. No, no, they did. They 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 did tell us um, basically that he was leaving. Okay. Um, and then the press conference, uh, God, the press release came out. He said, I came, I saw, I conquered. Thank you, LA Galaxy, for making me feel alive again. To the Galaxy fans, you wanted Zlatan. I gave you Zlatan. You are welcome. The story continues. Now, go back to watch baseball. I'm surprised that he didn't, he didn't take out another full page ad in the LA Times that said, thank you. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or, or you're welcome. You're welcome, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's I, don't, I don't know. But yeah, now go back to watch baseball. I, I said this. And it's all, it was that last Didn't know line. Didn't he was a baseball fan. Yeah, well, he's not, right? And he was like, this is a stupid sport. I'm sure that's what yeah. he, this is how I read into it. But he says, now go back to watch baseball. Um, I would rather watch baseball than cricket any day of the year. Uh, he, he, Zlatan has a way where he doesn't kick you in the balls. He just flicks you in the balls. That's the best way I can say. He always has a way of just being like, ah, I got gotcha. you one last time. Here's my little stick. Here's my little jab. One more time is, hey, you weren't paying attention. Oh, okay, here, let me, oh, one more time. I'm Zlatan. I'm the greatest thing that ever lived. And that's fun. Um, that's fun. That's still fun. I still enjoy it. I still like it. I will forever be a fan of Zlatan Ibrahimovic's. What we saw, and we can get back to the positives, what we saw with the goals, with his complete ability to dominate a game like nobody in Major League Soccer has ever done. No doubt. Don't get me started. You know, everybody, and I know LAFC fans are over there saying, well, Carlos Vela had scored more goals. Carlos Vela never dominated the game like Zlatan Ibrahimovic did. I mean, you know, he, he didn't play even two full seasons in this league, and I still think he's one of the greatest goal scorers in Major League Soccer history, despite Absolutely. despite being in this league for how many games? Uh, uh, 56 games? Yeah, 56 games, games. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I've, n- I've said it before, I've never seen anything like what this guy can do. Um, so, is, is he the greatest goal scorer in Major League Soccer history? You can argue that. I'm not sure. I would have to. I would have to do research and find who the, who the other top candidates would be. But he certainly is in the top three he's, at least. He's way up the list, Larry, on oh, yeah. on LA Galaxy single season goal scorers. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and and that's he was only here for like you said less than two seasons. Less than two seasons. So I mean, just, and I'll never forget. You know, speaking of Zlatan, what he what he was able able to do was his debut against LAFC last, what, last March. And yeah. I've covered a lot of sporting events during my time as a journalist. And his debut, especially that first goal, that 40-yard volley. <laughs> we were sitting next to each other. We were sitting next to each other, and that's one of the very few times I've almost cheered in the press box. And there's an unwritten rule, you do <laughs> not, not cheer. cheer in the press box. I came very close to cheering in the press box when he scored on that shot. I was just, Kay. I was st- Done. Can I tell? Can I tell a story about that? Sure. Whenever that. So you and I were sitting in what? By the way, not our normal seats. I no. remember this. We got switched to the other side right. because they didn't. They didn't like us that much right. at that time, right? So right. we got we got switched to the other side. And we and I had put on new deodorant too, so I wasn't smelling. Yeah, you so. were you were good. Yeah. Um, we were sitting there, and you and I are sitting there, and we're watching, and we had watched LAFC rack up three goals, and there were some LAFC um, people that were behind us behind and around us. us. Yes. Right. And every time they scored, their loud cheer would go up because, you know, they work for LAFC, blah, blah, blah. And deal. there's an unwritten rule. You do not cheer in yeah, the press box, that, unless you're covering like South America or Europe or, or whatever. Yeah, they, yes, they right. have different sort sure, of things. Sure. Um, so, so, they're, so they're cheering every time and they're pumping their fists and like high-fiving each other. And there was one person who is, uh, who is a rather strong, outspoken person on Twitter and who does some of their broadcasting and stuff like that who kept stepping in the way of the television for the replays and it was driving me crazy. And so you keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. We're going, and the Galaxy score that one goal, and then Zlatan comes in and scores the second goal, which is the his first goal that his he scored, goal. right? Right. Uh, that is just this, you know, ridiculous. Or actually, I think it was the third goal because didn't it tie the game, and then he ended up winning the game. Um, yes. Yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who, however, it ends up having. But whenever he scored, I remember that person 
like just dropping their head and and being like so disappointed and it was like yeah stop step stop standing in the way of the tv now and sit down and be quiet and it's like we're trying to work in here and now you're starting to realize that this is an actual working environment and you're about to lose and everybody knew everybody in the stadium knew everybody in the press box knew that the la galaxy now were probably going to win that game and it was no surprise whenever zlatan had the header that ended up winning that game everything you look at it, it was ridiculous and I've never heard the stadium that loud, that loud nope. as it was that day. Nope, absolutely not. It's covered two MLS or three MLS Cups, um, 2011, 2012, 2014. I've never heard that stadium like that. And just the atmosphere was electric from an hour before kickoff to the end of the match. Unbelievable. It was. Unbelievable. And those games. And we ha- can thank Zlatan for that, for bringing that level of, of excitement to that stadium. Well, and and as technically difficult as the I think the goal that he had this year where he was able to hit it up and then volley it and score. Oh. I mean, just the technical ability and people, you know, and I know Kevin, I'll give Kevin crap on this one cuz I I like I like to harass Kevin anyway. I think Ke- you like doing that, don't you? I do. Uh, Kevin likes to say that, you know, Zlatan just so physically dominating and but he he discounts the technical ability, I think. And for me, Zlatan is amazingly technical for the physical side that he has. I mean, He's a huge... He should not be able to run as well as he does. He should not be as... Te- he's a big, lanky dude. And watch his feet. He has very, very good feet he, for a guy his size. You know, just just amazing just what we were able to watch. And and again, put this in perspective. Are you ever going to see anything like that again? I don't know that I will. I don't think so. Maybe messy, uh, but certainly he's, he's, he's about a foot shorter than Zlatan is, but... Uh, Ronaldo, I'm not sure. He, I don't like his step over stuff. I think he shows off way too much. But I don't think we'll see anything like Zlatan again. You don't, I, don't, you, I think you're right. You don't like bat flips in baseball either. I can guarantee it. Bat flips? No, no I, yeah, I, think nah. I think it's I think it's it's, it's showboaty. It's showboaty. showboaty. Let's not have just, fun. Let's not yeah. have fun. Let's have fun. Um, but no, Zlatan brought the fun. Zlatan brought all that. Um, and it, he can keep the birthday gifts that I gave him. You're, you're gonna let? I thought you were gonna bill him. No, but the, if he give me his forwarding address, yes, I'd send him a bill. No, it's just like Santa Claus. All you have to do is write know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic on a, on a letter, right? And you put it in it, I just, with a stamp. I just wonder when he's gonna, make it. When he's going to put those things to use, the folding cane and the reading glasses. I don't know. Whenever he's way, way older than both of us. As old as me? Sure. Yeah. I'm the same age as Zlatan. I'm slightly older, so you know, I can't I can't make too much fun. I don't know how he gets out of bed every day, quite honestly. Um how should he be remembered, though? Is he an LA Galaxy legend? This is sort of one of those things that. Yes, was, he is. I, I don't think there's any question about it. You can you can say he didn't. Does win. he deserve a statue out front? Yes. Yes, I agree with you. Is it is it the next statue? No, <laughs> no, it's not the next statue. No. Um, I think Bruce Arena deserves one out front. I think Siggy Schmidt deserves one. I think Landon I think Donovan Siggy, deserves Landon one. Donovan, sure. S- Mauricio Cienfuegos, Kobe Jones. I mean, it's not you, Robbie Keane. I mean, there's a Mike lot. Mike McGee. Of, there's a Mike McGee. Oh, you know, Mike McGee does deserve a, a trophy. A, Especially a for playing goal against San Jose that one match. They need to. That's what. I'll that's never forget. I'm watching the game, and my sister or my my sister, my my, my daughter walks in. She and she looks at the TV screen, and and she says, "Dad, who's playing goalie for the Galaxy?" <laughs> yep. Yep. Mike McGee. I was at that game. Oh. Actually, I was there. Um, fun. Fun. Good times. Uh, no, I mean, though, all these people deserve a statue out in front for the guys that we talked and and Zlatan what he was able to do he took a mediocre LA Galaxy team see here's the thing and here's where pe- how people are going to argue um they're going to say he didn't win anything and he didn't Galaxy didn't win any trophies nope they did um, get the playoffs but again they didn't win anything you're right you know um they don't they you know all the stuff this is where like you can sort of get into the Zlatan thing he said he was going to break records you know he did he broke a single season goal scoring record for the LA Galaxy he would have been the golden boot winner um had he stayed probably maybe uh not suspended uh this last season and he probably could have scored a couple more goals um you have to ask yourself you know speaking of what he was able able to do for this team in less than two seasons what would this team have been like without Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Well, I mean, you, we've taken that and we've talked about that because then you have to think of that is, if Ola Kamara stays, you know, are the LA Galaxy and he had been better? playing very well. He had. Um, so you look at all these things. I mean, it's one of those that we'll, we won't know. I'll, I'll tell you this. The question now is, and you've seen it from some national broadcasters who quite honestly should know better. Um, you know, Stu Holden tweeted out and even Sam Sheskel, uh, you know, two guys who I, I respect. 
um, tweeted out that, you know, oh, well, the Galaxy are going to be so much better without Zlatan. And I'm like, I don't think, have you seen this team? What are they smoking? I don't know. It's not, they're not sharing, one. And two is, I don't know. Or maybe they're sharing with just too much. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah. this is one of those things where I sit there how and go. How can you say that? It depends on who they get, obviously. Correct. But it also depends on how the LA Galaxy are able to, we're going to call it a reload right now because I'm looking at this list and it's not a happy list of how you're building around the LA Galaxy right now. Um, I mean, let's go. So let's leave Zlatan where he is. But um, I have some harsh criticism for those guys who say that the Galaxy will be better um, without uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I can't believe somebody would say something like that. I, I said it with, I, I think it with Kevin. Uh, well, we did a show with Kevin, and he goes, you know, I think maybe the Galaxy take a step back in 2020. And he may be right. And in fact, the way things are shaping out, I think that they might take a step back in 2020. But here's the problem. They take a step back in 2020, people are getting fired. All right, Correct. Guillermo Barra The fan base is getting even more restless. Guillermo Barra is not going to survive this next season if the LA Galaxy don't continue in a positive trajectory. I agree with you. Uh, they are not just a, they are they have to be in the playoffs next year. That's not even a question. A conference final is almost mandatory, and you say that knowing now that there's going to be what thirty teams, almost twenty nine teams, twenty eight teams, uh, twenty seven teams, however many are coming in now. They're so, getting into MLS Cup is getting harder and harder and harder. The parity in the league makes it so. The structure of the league makes it so. The travel distances make it so. All of those things. So in order to win it, it's going to be a tremendous thing. But quite honestly, the LA Galaxy are expected to be in contention. And they need to be in contention next year. So they can't take a step backwards. Um, so for Stu Holden to come out and say, oh, the LA Galaxy will be better... Listen, they, they could. Maybe they sign somebody. Maybe they sign seven new players that are that all fit. Because if you look at the track record of all the players they brought in last year, Larry, you can't sit there and say that they hit on all of them. In fact, they probably didn't hit on very many of them. Right. As you just said, it depends on who they bring in. And just like I said, it's going to be a, it's not a revamping. It's going to be a retooling. I think, I, think, I think they have a pretty decent core. But there definitely are some holes they need to plug. There's no doubt about that. Well, another hole that needs plugging. Um, let's move away from Zlatan a little bit. Okay. Another hole that needs plugging. Uh, Dave Romney departs Nashville. Now, this is something that we told you about. We told you it was happening. We told you it would be official. It is official. The trade window was open. The trade window is now closed. So all this stuff leading up to the expansion draft, really. Uh, Dave Romney goes for $225,000 in general allocation money. There's apparently some kickers in there that could possibly increase that by $50,000 if Dave Romney meets a certain certain expectations. I don't know what those are. Um, nobody would tell me. Um, so uh, Dave Romney goes. Now, the thing I always liked about Dave yes. is, you know, I think we could both agree he wasn't the fastest guy out on the pitch, but he was so versatile. He could play anywhere on that back line. Right. In the middle with Dan Steris, and that was a hell of a twosome as we have talked ad nauseum about. Yeah, I was going to say. And he could play left back as well as as. Anybody he played right back on on occasion. He he could just he was so versatile. That's why, that's why he was, he was so important to this team. And Dave has every right to feel that he was under undervalued. I agree with him one hundred percent. Yeah, he came out and said that. By the way, yes. he said he was undervalued. Undervalued, um, which is some strong words. I mean, he we went on to the uh, he had a call with Nashville today um, with I think some of the reporters there. Um, which, by the way, you know anybody in Nashville? I think I've told you you're getting a great guy, and if you're a reporter in Nashville, you're getting a great quote. So talk to Dave as much as you want, and he's going to tell you great things. Dave claimed to be a stats nerd, uh, which is fun. Uh, I do know the fact that that Dave and I have have discussed stats before, um, and I'm sure we'll discuss stats after. Um, just in, in how all that goes. So he's saying that, but you know, he was really in there. He said, you know, that they didn't value. I wouldn't, if you're constantly undervalued, there's a reason that, you know, Dave wanted to go. And I don't blame Dave Romney for that. And quite honestly, good on Dennis DeClosa if he appeased Romney with a trade instead of keeping him where he would be un unhappy. That's how Bruce always worked right, things. You don't want unhappy players. You they're, don't. they're the worst kind, of, worst kind of players. But because you undervalued him, you now have a shallower bench for sure if you're going to say that Dave was a bench player um, or you're going to say that the defense is worse overall because Dave Romney you know isn't on there uh, the LA Galaxy's defense though is certainly something that you and I should talk about Larry and I know you did some 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 stats and some looks at it their and, defense has been pretty offensive yeah and you started what in the last five seasons right ever okay since the Galaxy uh, let's go from the last MLS Cup the Galaxy won in 2014 All right. I did it, I did I got my I got my staff together staff <laughs> consists of me yeah I was gonna say and I've 
I looked to see where the Galaxy defense ranked in the league from 2014 onwards after their last MLS Cup. And no, it did not rank very high. In fact, according to my calculations, they ranked 21st. 21st in the last five seasons. In the last seasons. five seasons, averaging 55 goals per season. Now, you have to understand that... That's uh, not good. ...that 2017 was the worst of those seasons, so you can certainly mark that. But it started to slide after Bruce left, uh, you know, in 2016. So 2015, 2016, 2017, um, 2018, 2019. The LA Galaxy ranked 21st. Now, uh... You and I already played this game, but Correct. you asked. Uh, you said, "Who are the who are the who are three, the top five? Uh, the, uh, no, the worst. Oh, the worst. The worst. The worst." And you start because I think this is super interesting. Right. Um, whenever well, you tell us, obviously the worst. Cincinnati. Uh, they had a tremendous debut with seventy-five goals allowed this last season. Right. Right. Second worst was Minnesota at sixty-one point three goals per season, and third was Orlando at an even 60.0, having allowed 300 goals in the last five seasons. Well done, Orlando City. Yeah, good job. Um, Cincinnati. Uh, what are, Cincinnati, Minnesota, Minnesota, Orlando. Minnesota, Orlando. You know what all three of those teams? And then teams? L.A. was next, the yeah. 21st. Do you know what all three of those teams have in common? They're all expansion, expansion teams, teams. And they're correct. all recent expansion yeah. teams. L.A. is not a recent expansion team. They are not. <laughs> um, that's shocking to me. You told yes. me that. And I, I'm one, I wasn't horribly surprised that they were that low. I wasn't either. I didn't think they'd be quite that low. I thought they'd be maybe around 15th or 16th, but 21st is not something to hang your hat on. So in the last five years, the LA Galaxy's defense ranks 21st. And you remember last year, what was the offseason focus was on defense. Defense, defense, defense. People Gonzalez, uh, Diego Polenta, Diego um, you know, bringing back Rolf Felcher, still having to hold on to Jorgen Shelvick. Uh, Dan Starez was probably their most consistent defender. You know, Dave Romney, you throw in there as well. They were trying to fix the defense last year, knowing that they were hamstrung by certain things. They weren't hamstrung, by the way, and I want to get this out. They weren't hamstrung by Rolf Felcher's contract, who took less money, and they actually declined his option and then brought him back. Um, they were hamstrung by Jorgen Shelvick making a million dollars and then not really playing down the stretch. So that was a thing. Um, and Dennis really went out of, out of his way to, if you listen to his comments between the lines, I can't remember exactly what they were, but... He was not happy with Jorgen at all. Yeah, and and, and you could you could sense that, and that's why Jorgen's not going to be. Listen, this is not breaking news, but I, I will tell you, Fabio Alvarez is not coming back. His loan ended. He will not be back for the 2020 season. There was an option to buy the Galaxy. You're not buying. So Fabio Alvarez, adios. He's gone. Uh, Jorgen Shelvick. Listen, there's nothing official. Jorgen Shelvick is gone. Everybody knows he's gone. Um, so he's gone. Dave Romney is gone. Sebastian Legette is out of contract right now. Um, you know you know that Jonathan Dos Santos is coming back. You know that uh, Joe Corona is coming back. You know that Christian Pavone. Let's clear this up. Be One last thing about the yes, league, yes. Uh, about where the, uh, the, the uh, various defenses ranked in the league. One, one last thing. Yes. If people are interested, the top five in order. The oh, last yes. five seasons. By the way, everybody pause for a second. Okay, yes. see how many teams they can guess are in the top okay. five. Here, and I played this game, and I did guess. Did I guess number one? I did get no. number No, I didn't. No. no, I thought I did. You guessed number four. I guess number four. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I guess four. I guess the New York Red Bulls was my first one. And I was like, because I know they've been defensively good. Red Bulls are fourth. Okay, number one, though. Or do number five. Who's number five? Number five is Sporting Kansas City. Sporting Kansas City, known for their defense. An average of 44.4 goals, and they had that one tremendous season. Were 2017, they, they allowed only 29 goals. Yes, correct. Okay, so there's 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 five that's and four. Number five. What about mm -hmm. number three? Number three, kind of... A team that we talked about, if they had more offense, they'd be a hell of a team. FC Dallas. FC Dallas. If they could only find some goals, they would be a very good team. At 43.4. Okay. Number, number two, two, surprisingly, yes. Atlanta. Atlanta. Again, an expansion team that did a good job. So their numbers aren't as skewed. 42.3. Yeah, aren't as skewed uh, by, by much, mostly expansion team coming in. Okay, so number one. And number one is the newly crowned MLS Cup champion, Seattle Sounders, <laughs> at 40.8. None of that surprises me. None of that surprises me. Uh, again, the Galaxy being 21st. 21st. Maybe well done, Galaxy. Anyway, uh, Christian Pavone. Let's clear up something on Christian Pavone because I see these people and, and I get and I get these questions. I get questions constantly. And I'm here to tell you, unless something drastically changes in the collective bargaining agreement, uh, Christian Pavone will be a designated player next year. So, Zlatan Deservedly Ibrahimovic. So. Deservedly yeah, so. Zlatan Ibrahimovic left, right? 
It frees up $7.2 million. Yes, but who cares about the money? Sure. The money's not important, and, and even Dennis said as much. He said, the money's not important, the, the spot is. If I had $7.2 million, it'd be important I, it'd be to important, me. I would be important to me, too. Um, but uh, So Zlatan leaves. The de- one designated, de- designated player spot is open. Currently, that's going to be filled by Christian Pavone in 2020. Uh, with his salary, which is $1.2 million, and we expect that to be either $1.2 or higher next year, uh, for his complete salary uh, and the loan fee that they will now have to play. Remember, they didn't have to pay a loan fee to Boca Larry because Boca told them they could have him for free, which was okay, cool. But it was with the acknowledgement that they would extend the loan and do a loan for this 2020 season. Dennis has already said Pavone is coming back. It's unlikely the Galaxy could just straight out buy Pavone right now. There's no need to. Well, take they a, have an option, though, after next season, right? After next season. I'm after sure they could season. buy him now if they really wanted yeah. to, but why spend the money whenever you could just have him on loan? Um, so they're going to have him on loan. They're going to do that. So he will be here on loan for another year, but he will be a designated player. Just because he's on loan doesn't mean you can't be a designated player. That's not that, Those aren't the rules. That's not how it works. Uh, CBA was... Um, the CBA and how it gets adjusted could change that, but right now you should expect that there are currently no open designated player spots for the LA Galaxy headed into 2020. You know, and speaking of of Christian, who was tremendous, um, I'm curious to see how much longer he stays in the, in this league. After all, a certain uh, a certain recent departee of the Galaxy said he's too good for MLS. Yeah, uh, I don't know that he stays um, past next year. I don't know if the Galaxy I spend the money right. to keep him because um, that might be a ton of money. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's not. It's one of those. Um, so you'll have to see how it was. By the way, uh, Philip in the chat room says, Josh said Seattle wasn't very good for months. Guess what, Philip? They weren't very good for months. <laughs> no, they weren't. Uh, but they fact, got hot. They I, got hot. I absolutely said this a million times. Seattle's not a playoff team. All right. And they finished second in the Western Conference. Yeah, great. Good job, Josh. Way to, way to nail that one. Um, and by the you, way. You can't be right all the time, Josh. By the way, Philip, the reason they were injured like crazy, and that's why they were no good. Um, at one point, they had nine players injured. I remember that. They could only dress like 14 people. It was crazy. Um, so anyway, we'll get back to that. So Christian Pavone is going to be a designated player. The one spot that could be open is Roman Alessandrini's. His contract is up. We know that. The LA Galaxy have to decide if they want to bring him back. I think there's zero chance of bringing him back as a designated player. But but I think he will be back because Scalotto said on more than one occasion during the season, he's, quote, a very important player. And... Who can forget the impact he had on this team in, in his in his brief appearances toward the end of the season? He was tremendous off the bench. He, he was tremendous. He was. He was uh, He was fun to watch. He's he will be back, and I think you're right. I don't think he comes back as a DP. So he's a TAM player. So your designated player spot, the one that you probably have, is going to come at the expense of Roman Alessandrini, either not being with the club or as a TAM player. I think him as a million-dollar player, he could take Jorgen Shelvick money at a million dollars. And remember, that means Pavone gets bumped up into a DP and not Tam, so you actually get some money back from that as well. So there's a whole bunch of things there that I think the uh, the Galaxy could do. Now, hold now, on. Now, speaking of Alessandrini, wasn't he supposedly in Montreal when uh, the Impact uh, announced Thierry Henry as their head coach today? <laughs> I think I think you mentioned that. I think you. Uh, I, I I may have stirred up trouble that yeah. I didn't mean to stir up. I wasn't. I wasn't when do you never stir up trouble? I, I, I listen. I don't. I, I but don't, it's good controversy. It's good. It is. It is. But I didn't. I even said. I said conspiracy theory time. Like there was nothing behind it. I was like, yeah. it's just fun to sort of play. Is that Roman Alessandrini was and somebody tagged me in the post um, was in Montreal, and we have heard before that Montreal was interested in Roman Alessandrini. It is a heavily French speaking city. It is, so, and yeah. and and Roman Alessandrini, last I checked, is French. So yes. Um, oui, oui, monsieur. Uh, so he was in Montreal, and he's probably just up there visiting because it's French, and that's fun. We hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so he was up there, and then... If he's checking out the real estate, something else is going on. And then Montreal announces that Thierry Henry is coming in as their head coach, which, by the way, is super fun for the league. That's awesome. That's a great move. Fantastic. That's great for Montreal. Uh, and he was a great Montreal. player in his brief stint in MLS. Oh, he was he, a great player. So much fun. Um, so much AJ fun De La Garza said he was the strongest player he'd ever faced when he faced him in... One of the live friendlies at the Rose Bowl. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite games that ever got played was I think a one-one or a two-two draw uh, where New York Red Bulls came and it was Terry Henry and Luke Rogers versus Landon Donovan and Robbie Keane and you know all that fun and it was a draw. Uh, it was and it was one of the most exciting, electrifying games that I remember and it was it was just fun to watch. Um, so yeah, so anyway, so then I said conspiracy theory. Does that mean that you know 
that Alessandrini is going to go ter- uh, pair up with Thierry Henry, two French guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on. Kick the hornet's nest. That's right. And so everybody's like, you can't do this to me. I'm like, listen, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Relax. I had people being like. It's just this- Josh being Josh. Is this true? I'm like, I- no. It, at least as far as I know, it's not true. Watch, it's going to end up happening. But no, I have no information, no knowledge. I, was I hope ju- it doesn't happen. I was. There were dots, and I connected them, and they could make a picture. They could not make a picture. So anyway, um, yes, that was that was my fun time. Um Here's here's the thing. Let's go over this. And if you if you haven't gone to our rumor tracker, by the way, this is something that I'm probably it might be the second most proudest thing I'm, I've ever been of anything. Um, podcast it has more information than you'll find anywhere else. I've looked at it a bunch of times, and it's always it's always outstanding. It, it really is. Thank you, thank you, Larry. I try. I, I had the template from last year, I so have I to just give him a good word every now and then. Yeah, that's you know right. I mean? That's how you get paid. Uh, all that, all those, all those big payments. I buy you lunch every once in a while. I'm, I'm True. a nice guy. True. Um, but no. So uh, if you go to the rumor tracker, I suggest that you go and you bookmark it. I usually it gets updated once a day if there's stuff to be updated. Sometimes it gets up, updated twice or three times a day. Um, if something comes out that I think is worthy of it, then I put it on the rumor tracker. But the rumor tracker consists of a whole bunch of things, including you know the MLS option exercise deadlines coming up on November 21st, so we'll know who the LA Galaxy have have picked up the options on, who they've declined who's out of contract all that stuff will come uh mls expansion draft is november 19th so i have put up on the list of uh of protected players of projected protected players <laughs> and it, i think it's pretty accurate looking at the list i think you're spot on it's not hard that's that was that was sort of thing it, when it's not and hard, also this list of unprotected players it's not very attractive <laughs> i was gonna say so i mean there's some so the, here are the rules the la galaxy are allowed to protect 12 players that's one more than they than they had last year last year they were allowed 11 this year they're allowed 12 uh the only team that's probably picking against him is that uh is miami <clears throat> Uh, because it looks like there's a handshake handshake agreement deal, and we sort of talked about that with Nashville SC, that if they traded Dave Romney, they, they wouldn't, wouldn't be select selected. Anybody. Yeah. Uh, that's not contractual, by the way. That's just sort of like, hey, wink, wink, sh- handshake. We Which happens a lot in in all sports. Yeah, so, so that seems to be happening. So um, understanding that the most the LA Galaxy can lose is one player, uh, and that Miami can pick up to five players, uh, and Nashville will get to pick up to five players as well. Um, I put together my protected list. Now, it was a lot more difficult. There was one player that was really hard whenever Zlatan Ibrahimovic was still on this list. And then he went away and I got my spot and I'm pretty sure I, I got all these. Uh, Jonathan Dos Santos is protected. Duh. Ramon Alessandrini is protected. Yes, you need to protect his rights. If he's out of contract, he could go to Montreal, but the LA Galaxy would actually that would involve a trade for his rights with Montreal. Uh, Christian Pavone is protected. Duh. Uh, Jorgen Shelvik, not he's protected. On his, he's on his way back to Europe. Yep. Uh, Diego Polenta right now is protected, and I think there's a real chance that um, they might not bring him. They back. They might not bring him back. I think that Diego Polenta might not be coming back, and there's been some rustling and some rumors about that. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, Giancarlo Gonzalez, right now you're protecting him. I think he will be back. Fabio Alvarez, he's gone. We already told you his loan is up. He's not coming back. That's it. So Going adios, back Fabio. to Argentina. Uh, I believe so. Is that where he's from? I think that's where he's from. Tucumán, I think. Atlético yep. Tucumán, yep. I, I, I believe. You I, you are correct. That jogged my memory. Uh, Joe, right. Joe Corona. I may be old, but I haven't lost my faculties yet. That's why we keep you around here. Uh, Joe Corona. Uh, back is, for another two years, protected. Yeah, he's protected. Perry Kitchen, not protected. Uh, he's the one that's sort of up in the air. Do we think, you and I were talking, do we think Miami's going to pick him? We don't. I don't think so. I, I don't think. Now, we could be wrong. And if, by the way, if they did, the LA Galaxy would probably be okay with that. We've heard rumors that they're shopping that contract right now. He has another year left at least on his contract. Especially after the year he had. With, I mean, he missed so much time with the with the uh, the heel and the, uh, the groin injury. Uh, he would not be an attractive pickup. But... If you looked at the at the, his performances late in the season, played very well when he was healthy. Um, Uriel, but I don't. But I'm I'm like you. I don't think he's going to be picked up. Yeah. So Perry Kitchen, listen. I think I would protect him. I think it's stupid to keep getting rid of domestic players that can play. And Perry Kitchen can play. Whether or not you can p- afford him at four hundred seventy five thousand dollars, that's a different question. I still think you protect him, but I don't think Miami's going to pick him. So I think he's still on this team whenever that goes around. Uh, Oriol Antuna, we have told you, and we will tell you, there are rumors that he's going to Chivas de Guadalajara. Um, that is, that seems likely. The fee seems about eleven million dollars. Dennis DeClosa has hinted at 
early on Tuna not coming back. Uh, David Bingham is protected. Duh. Sebastian Legette, even though he's out of contra- contract, is protected. He'll be back. Yep. Uh, Joao Pedro, not protected. I know Joao he's still who? I, I don't even he's know. He's still in this roster? He, he is until this year, and then, <laughs> and then that's it. He played, what, about eight years ago, and yeah. he's still on the roster? Feels, hey, don't. that's the Hammer's favorite player. Be, be nice to Joao. Um, Rolf Felcher uh, is protected. Absolutely. I think he's coming back. I know people are like, he's not coming back. He's coming back. Um, that's my my opinion. There's no facts uh, stated in that. Uh, Juninho, not coming back. No he'll, need to protect him. He will be retiring. Uh, I think so. Uh, let's see. Dan Steris, protected. Yes. He's out of contract negotiating a new deal. Uh, let's they see. They have to bring him back. Uh, he, Ju- was very, he was very valuable last year. He Ju- really was. Julian Araujo, yes. You have to protect him. Remember, this was what we talked about. How about, about. Hilliard Arce? Wait, hold, nobody cares. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I literally Sorry, Tomas, him. if you're listening, sorry. I mean, sure, you can have him up there. The thing is, he's a supplemental roster player. He's and, a depth guy, yeah. And if, the, if Miami were to pick him, they would have to offer him a senior roster spot, which gets into a little bit of weeds, and I don't see that happening. Not worth it. Uh, Julian Araujo, you have to protect him. And remember, they forget, they, 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 I was going to say forgot. They, they gave away his homegrown rights. Remember, basically, he could have been a homegrown player if they waited a little bit longer. Um, very good prospect, though. You have to keep him. And you have so, to protect him. And so they didn't. They, they said, no, we're not going to worry about the homegrown. So he could have been exempt, but he's not because they didn't wait. And so they got him instead. So now they have to protect him, um, which sort of falls into this. Uh, Lamson not protected. Carrasco not protected. I actually think Carrasco is going to retire. Kevin and I talked about that last Thursday. Uh, Emil Cuello not protected. Justin Baumstieg not protected. And Didi Traore, I do think you protect him. Yes. Um, now, you could maybe not protect Traore and you know put Kitchen. I actually think somebody might might pick up Triori. That might be a good depth feel uh, for that. So that's it. Uh, the Not yeah. a very attractive list when you look. At I mean, it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just the, the the roster right now is not complete. Um, it's not even close. And as I was saying, I want to build around this core. I would like to see them build around a core of players. The core of players is not as strong as I would like to see either. You were not strong down the middle. Um, you know, Garth Lagerway was talking about setting up teams and saying how being strong down the middle is one of the most important things you can do. And the LA Galaxy have not been strong down the middle. I think Jonathan Dos Santos is one of the strongest positions they have. Uh, so I think that he helps in that. But if you look at the defensive pairing that has been behind him, you can't say that that's been strong. I think Dan Steris is part of that and can be strong. I think if they had Steris and Romney, it would be strong. I was just going to say the best twosome in the middle of that back line, Steris yeah. and Romney. Yeah. So, so you look at that and that's, that's what you got to do. Um, that's what it is. Uh, uh, Hugo Ariano, Ethan Zubak, Bradford Jameson, who I don't think is coming back to the LA Galaxy, quite honestly. Uh, I just I haven't heard anything in that usually leads. Is he means. still with San Antonio? He was, but I think that's over now. Okay. So I, I don't know if he's coming back or if he's going to be traded, but he's a homegrown player. Um, and Efrain Alvarez are all homegrown players and therefore exempt from the expansion draft. So you don't have to worry about them. But that's what you have on the protected side. Uh, of things and like I said, Larry, I do not have a good feeling right now. And you talk about will the LA Galaxy be better without Zlatan? Not with this roster. No, uh, this roster has a bunch of holes in it. Um, so we'll see how that goes um, and how that goes. Again, the the list of players is supposed to be put out, I believe, on November sixteenth at seven p.m. Pacific time. We should know the list of protected players. If fans of this team thought the Galaxy retooling after the two thousand eighteen season was important. They ain't seen nothing yet. This, this could be even more important, this restocking of the roster. There are a bunch of things that are coming down. That's why you should probably go to the over to the rumor tracker um, again and, and just you know take a look at it and, and see where it is. It's the rumor tracker. It's the off-season tracker. We have everything um, sort of there for you so that way you can take a look at it. Um, and we try to update it as much as we can. I even give you analysis on, on some of this stuff. So um, you can take a look at it. So the waiver draft is coming. Uh, the re-entry draft, stage one. The re-entry draft, stage two. All that stuff is on here. And then if you go down, there's even a transaction section that tells you new signings, re-signings, trade tracker, loan tracker, retirements, and departures. Where do you find the time to do all I, this stuff? I don't sleep very much. Um, Apparently. If you, but this is everybody's favorite section. I put it down at the bottom because it usually ends up growing to some ridiculous number and it gets crazy stupid, um, is the rumor tracker. Uh, the rumor tracker now is up, alive, it's and It's almost running. like a labor of love, isn't it? I think that... It really is. I think that people deserve to know whether or not 
these rumors have any smoke to them. They're and not going to find this information anyplace else. You can find it around. I don't think it's aggregated. I mean, you know, there's stuff that's there. And listen, I look at Twitter and I find stuff. And to be honest with you, the, the listeners, Larry. I look on Twitter too. No, you don't. The listeners, um, the listeners are great because they send me rumors. They send me true rumors all the time. They're like, hey, this is a rumor. What do you think? And then I'll go through and I'll look that's at good. it. And then I will use sort of my... My, def- my my sort of my judgment on what I think is correct, what I don't think is correct, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Uh, and the big rumor right now, uh, we talked about Uriel Antuna to Chivas Guadalajara. I just I, I said that it's a three star rumor. I rank them all out of five stars. And if the LA Galaxy ever win a six star, I will I will it'll be out of six stars. If those contract numbers are correct, he will be going to Chivas. There is no doubt. Yeah, it does it doesn't seem or he's going somewhere. I said three stars on that rumor, three out of five. If you're asking me whether or not he comes back to the LA Galaxy, I would say is pretty solid. I would say four out of five, right? Okay. I just don't know where he's going. That's not that's not the the important thing. I just think he's gone. Uh, but the big rumor that has been circulating right now, and that uh, I actually have some knowledge of, um, the uh, Edison Cavani, 32 uh, year old, obviously plays for Paris Saint Germain in Ligue 1. Uh, there have been reports that the LA Galaxy have sent people to uh, Paris. Sweet, sweet Paris. Paris. Uh, wonderful, wonderful city. Uh, uh-huh. th- there to see PSG and see if they can get Cavani. I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going to Paris for a little sightseeing tour. You know, that's I was, <laughs> I, I was joking with somebody. I'm like, they should really pay you to go to Paris and and keep track of all these things. And he's like, I'd take Spain. And I'm like, hey, don't be picky. I take London first. D- don't d- don't be picky. Uh, so anyway. Uh, there's a bunch of reports that are out there right now that the LA Galaxy are targeting uh, Cavani. Now, Cavani has been rumored to already have a quote-unquote handshake deal with uh, David Beckham and Miami to go there. So You it's, mean Fort Lauderdale slash Miami? Yeah, yes, Fort Lauderdale slash, slash Miami, says the guy who goes to Carson in Los Angeles. All right? Do we, we have to... I, that's why I just don't... It doesn't matter. True. Um, whenever you get onto this, uh, it's, it's interesting. Cavani, 32 years old. He certainly fits the style. If you're looking at a three-four-three, he's he can attack as a striker. He's mobile. He does have some injury history, which is not great. Um, he was tremendous in the World Cup in Brazil too. In I, fact, that team from Uruguay was tremendous. I think that what you're looking at with Cavani, and I'm going to speculate right now. Um, I think what you're looking at with Cavani is the LA Galaxy attempting to get Cavani for free from PSG in terms of just release him and we'll take him and we'll pay him a whole bunch of money because we don't want to pay a whole bunch of money in transfer fees or anything else. But we give us give us give us him for free and he will he will do for us in winter. If Dennis can work out a deal with PSG like he worked out the deal with Boca for Christian Pavone, more power to him. I mean, this is this is this is how you this is how you do this. You throw it out. Um, I know that there is some smoke to this fire. I know that the LA Galaxy do seem like they're interested in Cavani. Um, that seems to be real. I don't think that he's going to be their primary target. I don't. Um, he's a he's a big enough name. He could certainly play the position. Um, but I have a feeling that there's going to be, and I've certainly been hearing rumblings that there's there's other things that they have on their list, and that could mean somebody bigger than Cavani. Cavani's great. My mom doesn't know who Cavani is though, and that's my my sort of my. I've heard of Montavani, but not Cavani. So so uh, he's he's a great player. I really like him. I think that he would be mobile enough to you know. Uh, Kevin and I were talking on the phone today and we were talking about Cavani and does that fit with what Dennis DeClosa has been saying? Um, Because this is what we do is we take what we hear in rumors and then we try to run it through what we have heard talking to people. And Dennis says, you know, the defense isn't always about defenders. It's also about, you know, everybody on the field. And so what that means to me is a high pressure trap style offense slash defense that tries to attack the ball in the attacking third and win that ball quickly. And you saw the LA Galaxy doing some of that. But with Zlatan, you didn't have that press from the forward as much as you'd like. Cavani can probably be that. Um, you need somebody who's going to be highly mobile and highly quick um, and then be a, a, a you know a, a a clinical finisher. And I think that Cavani checks all those. He might be. He might be I agree. He might be a good fit. I, but who knows how things are going to transpire. I will tell you right now that Cavani is not a name that will put a whole bunch of seats it into won't. Dignity Health Sports Park. Right. And that's where he this... He won't m- sell the same amount of jerseys at the lot of times. So and he won't sell a fraction of the same amount of jerseys. And that's where this misses. Okay, that's where this misses. That's where... I mean, the, granted, he's a good player. I he mean, is. He's a very talented player. I, but... He, people have to understand... <laughs> it's really hard. People have to understand, and I try to say it, and I think maybe even I've won Kevin over because we were arguing about it again. Um... <laughs> 
it's it's that that Miami is cool and Miami can probably get some cool South American players in there and they don't have to have some huge stars in order to be relevant in Miami. I do think Miami's more of a star driven town than say Atlanta. Um, Atlanta has shown you don't need huge stars in terms of name recognition to be successful in Atlanta. That's great, but that doesn't work in LA. Um, so this is where Cavani misses. I know who Cavani is. You know who Cavani is. The people who w listen to the show all the time know who Cavani are. That's not who I'm talking about, though. That's not who sells... It, it, let's say the LA Galaxy, let's give them 13,000 season ticket holders, which I don't think they have that many. But let's say they have 13,000 season ticket holders. The stadium holds 25,000, which means there's 12,000 tickets. You have to sell 12,000 tickets to every single game that are basically walk-up tickets. Right? So how do you do that? You know how you do it? You can have names like Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Quite honestly, you have names like... Or you like, give a bunch of them away. Yeah, that works too. Uh, <laughs> you have names like Robbie Keane. You have names like... and listen, Like Rob, David Beckham. Like David Beckham. Like, like Landon Donovan. I'm going to say it. Like Steven Gerrard. Like Steven Gerrard. That's, yes. how, that's how you do it. Now you need success. And that's how it has to be. So um, I think that there's bigger names than Cavani out there. And I think the LA Galaxy know there are bigger names. And I think that if they can get Cavani for the winner and they can get him for a, a deal, I think they make the deal. Um, so that could happen. Uh, if not, I wouldn't be surprised if the LA Galaxy have two designated players headed into the summer. Or they leave Ramon Alessandrini where he's at for half a season and tell him, if we're going to buy a DP, you're going to go down to the TAM. And you better stay healthy. And you be Yeah, you better stay healthy. <laughs> you I can't can have another season where you, play only, where you play only five regular season matches. That won't cut it. Here's, here's the deal, though, Larry. That means that the LA Galaxy are incomplete until summer. And that's difficult. That's, That's going to be do. difficult on, on, the, on the fan base. Will they settle for that? Here, here we go. Don't worry. We have people in the chat room. Chasen says that my argument is a tired old argument. Here's the deal, dude. Uh, it's, it's, it's tired. Watch um, your language. Watch your language. It's tired, um, but it's 100% accurate. Uh, and I can tell you uh, fairly accurately how many people you will get per game if you don't replace somebody with a big name. And it'll be under 19,000 per game. And then a 25,000 seat stadium. That's what you'll get. I mean, this is... I remember Bruce Arena once told me this team always likes to make a splash. It, they have with, to. With players is, I don't think Cavani is a splash. I think he's more like a ripple. He but is. There's not, but that's not, that's not sliding him whatsoever. He's a very good player, but is he, a, is he a personality? Just like I said, is he the kind of person to bring in seats? No. No. Uh, by the way, uh, somebody in the chat room, uh, 805 says, uh, says, you mean like Giovanni Dos Santos? Yes. Like Giovanni yes. Dos Santos. I know. And that's crazy. But that, that's a name. That's a name. And Cavani is a name that's probably uh, maybe on par with Gio, maybe a little bit under Gio. But Giovanni Dos Santos is a huge name, especially in Southern California. Um, you don't get that as much with Cavani. I, I think Cavani would be great for this um, this 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 team. I think that fitting the style makes sense. Uh, I think there are other players. Um, don't worry. We'll, we'll keep digging. We'll keep digging. We'll figure it out. But I'm telling you, uh, right now, I don't think, in my opinion, Cavani is a big enough name for the Galaxy to make them his, their primary target. Uh, I would say that there might be uh, something else. Yeah, but would, he, would he be a good acquisition? Yes. I would. Yes. Well, like I said, I agree with you. He is not their primary Alex, Alex in Alex in the chat room says, why not Luis Suarez? That's a great call. A great call. You want to talk about a name? Who's big enough? Who fits? Who? I can tell you one thing: the, yes. the the LA area dentist would love to see him out here. <laughs> <laughs> With would, that overbite, holy smokes! What I was go, I was going to say, uh, you know, if Luis Suarez comes, you know, is he still going to be hungry in Major League Soccer? <laughs> um, I mean, there's first of all, I already like that, it already. That certainly was a biting remark. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we could keep going forever. I know, uh, but no, I mean, that's that is a name. That's a worldwide name. Again, let's go. Does my mom know who it is? Yes, my mom probably knows who Luis Suarez is. She may not know 100%, but I'll be like, it's that dude who bit somebody. She'll be I like... Think that guy st I think he still has teeth marks in his shoulder when Suarez got him in the World Cup. Yep, exactly. Um, so anyway, so I mean, those are the names. That's the level. Luis Suarez, yes, that's sort of the, the That level. would bring in... That would fill seats. I, you no know, doubt. So that's that's where you're at. Um, you know, yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, you know, if you're pipe dreaming. Um, if you want to pay $80 million a Leo, year. Leo Messi. Um, there are good names. And listen, the LA Galaxy could... Spend spend uh there's no i can see the galaxy spending 20 million dollars on a player i really do and i think that happens in the next five years for the galaxy i don't know if it happens this year uh zlatan was was the most expensive player ever in league history at 7.2 million dollars i could see the galaxy spending 10 or 12 million dollars in the next couple of sure. years easily and 15 or 20 
um, in the foreseeable future. What happens with the CBA, though, Larry? That's anybody's guess, and that's sort of where we're at right now. Uh, Do you think the season will start on time? No. And, I don't think so And either. we've said that many times. Although Don Garber recently was quoted as saying talks have been, quote, productive, unquote. They're always sure. productive until it comes down They're to always like- always productive, yes. That, you know why? Because it's easy at the beginning. You're like checking stuff off. You're like, oh, check, yep, check, yep, check. Oh, yeah, well, we're doing all the easy things. That's why it's, t- it's the Charters, hard things. Charters, uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, free agency, we'll get back to you. Uh, Tam, we'll get back to you. Um, Gam, we'll get back to you. Spam, you have as much as you want. Yeah, Sergio Aguero, somebody said as well. I, sure, why not? Um, I, you know, I don't know. Again, big enough name? Mm, no. Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Again, great for the team. A gr- yes. Great players for the team. That doesn't mean... But a seat filler, no. But and you need both. You need both. And the guy, by the way, if, if somebody like, you know, David Beckham comes and the Galaxy don't win, then there's not a full stadium. The Galaxy need to win and they need to have stars and it's been that way and it's always will be that way for the foreseeable future until, I guess, uh, all the grandmothers know all the footballers' names whenever it goes. So, um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, but Luis Suarez, yeah, that was that's a really good that's call. A fun, that's a fun that's a really one. good call. That's a fun one. Mario Balotelli, you know, technically, yes. That, technically, that one rises to the level of he's going to put butts in seats. But. I'll never forget that friendly head against the Galaxy at uh, what was then Home Depot Center, and he tried to show off with the back heel uh, shot, and the, yeah. the, the coach of Man City took him right out after that play. Uh, I also think that it is, um, like, whenever you see those, it's like, yeah, Mario Balotelli is is sort of where it is. And you talk about a live wire. Holy smokes. Well, you know, Chicharito has also been kicked around by Kevin. I don't necessarily agree that I think Chicharito would be a good draw in Southern California. I don't know that he fits this team though. I remember a couple of years ago talking with one of the Hispanic journalists and he said Chicharito did not want to come to Los Angeles. No, yeah, well, to the, play. I don't know if he, he still can go to Miami. has those same He can go to Miami. David Beckham will, will give him a contract. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. It's all good. Anyway, it's it's it is silly season. Um, it is silly season, and it's going to continue to be silly, and you're going to find me in a worse and worse mood the sillier the rumors are. And I have no problem with calling you crazy uh, whenever you give me some stupid rumor that I have to sit there. Uh, but, but he does it with a smile on his face. Uh, yeah, most of the time. Now I just jam in the keyboard. <laughs> what is? Where are we coming from with these? Um, yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of ways for the LA Galaxy to make a splash. I think there's a lot of ways for the LA Galaxy to make a good team in 2019. Um, I do not think that the LA Galaxy, um, w- without winning and having a star power, will be able to sort of ride the 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 recession that's going to hit with Zlatan not being there. I mean, that's just a given. Zlatan filled those seats every game, and he's not going to be there, and that's going to be hard. Um, so the LA Galaxy marketing team has a lot to do. I think this team is going. I think next year's team is going to have to be certainly more hard scrabble than this year's team was, and that starts with that back line. That starts with with the defense and. Uh... The central mid- midfield. I mean, they have to, boy, they, they have to do something about that. I we'll, mean, we'll see. We'll see how that ends up going. When you're ranked 21st on defense in the league in the last five years, that that is not acceptable. It's uh, uh, it's a, it's a travesty, quite honestly. Bruce Arena was, if not anything, was was good at you know really solidifying defense. His uh, teams could play defense; they really could. And if you didn't, you wouldn't play. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all goes. Uh, again, with a track record with Dennis DeClosa and Guillermo Barrescoloto, who I like, um, they have a lot to prove, though, in this offseason because all of the um, guys they brought in to try to address some the issues really didn't pay. I think that Christian Pavon panned out, hey, good job. Um, I think that Joe Corona, quite honestly, was just fine for me. I think that's a good signing, and, and I'm glad that he's I thought so, too. Uh, I think the Galaxy will be happy that he's back. Um, and then there's Giancarlo. Giancarlo it did nothing. Um, Diego Polenta was a mixed bag, quite honestly. Mixed bag. Um, you know, so what What else are you going to do? Fabio Alvarez was good sometimes, was bad sometimes. Yeah. Um, so there were no home runs outside but of Pavone, but pa- anybody could have made them. Anybody could have made that Pavone move if you could get him there. Now, Dennis deserves credit for getting him here, but his performance is not surprising. Um, and I think, uh, like Guillermo says, it is... Um, it, it, you've only seen a little bit of what Pavone can do. Um, and so if Guillermo knows that to be the case... That's a hell of a glimpse if, if, oh, if he's right. It would be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Uh, I think that about does it, Larry. Are we Are we good? 
I think so. Nothing nothing is left in our calendar as far as I know. Joe brought in, by the way, before we go, and I don't want to leave because I was critical, and so let's leave on more of a positive. He goes, you know, you did bring in Antuna, and I thought Antuna had moments of really good play. Yes, he did. Um, on a whole, I was satisfied with what Antuna brought. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate Antuna maybe uh, between a 6 and a 7. That was I was I was there. I was at a 7. That's fine. Um, so yeah, that's fine as well. All right. But when he was good, he was very good. But at some times, he would also tend to disappear during matches. He would. He would. Um, like a lot of players. Yes, not just because he's just a he's just a little guy. He yeah. just you know. It hey, it is what it is. All right. But I think he'll be moving on. You're good. Yes, sir. I'm good. All right. If you're and looking, good luck. Yeah, yeah. I know. We're we'll, we'll we'll hang in there. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Everything is uh is good to go as it continues. And so far, everything is. All right. If you're looking for Mr. Larry Morgan on Twitter. You can't find him because he's can't not there. Find, well, but I do look on Twitter, but that doesn't necessarily mean I have a secret account. I think maybe he has a secret account somewhere. I think I think maybe he's he signed up under Bruce Arena's name or something like that. He's going around as Bruce Arena. No, John Guzman's name. Yeah, that's right. That's what it is. Uh, so if you're looking for Larry, you can find him on our website, cornerofthegalaxy.com, where Thanks, Larry's Josh. writing some great stuff, and uh, Larry always does great. Thanks for coming on, Larry. Appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Catch that rumor track. Catch that that transaction tracker. Catch, catch that off-season tracker right there. Bookmark it. Look out on your phone at least 12 times a day. That'll help me out with all the page hits. That'll be good for me. It'll be good for you. Um, but we'll have more stuff as it comes out. And as it breaks, we will be right here for you. Uh, probably another show next Thursday. Looks like Eric might be back in the chair for that one. All right. For Mr. Larry Morgan not on Twitter, I'm Josh Kessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Arajo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everyone.